start again. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be a big <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna be, be a special, yeah. moment. All right. Now, obviously, um, you know, the last few days, as, as soon as we entered into 2016, we heard the news of the unfortunate accident of um, another legend, Amachi Dede. Day. Um, you know, we heard of about the, the the passing of his manager, and we know his bodyguard is still injured. Have you had a chance to speak to him, or have you, um, you know, I know some of the people in music. No, I, uh, I, I sent a message through Obo, because the thing happened, of course, without notice, as yeah, as is usually the case. And uh, the day that uh, delegation, they invited me as part of the delegation to see my colleague, and uh, I, the, the date, you know, it was just like two hours. Just that actually really got to me because I was like a legend of his status. Any musician going to perform, I don't know what the ins and outs of why, but a legend like him having to change in his car. Now, like, how are we having performers, musicians, artists go to a venue or wherever to perform and the basic thing of a dressing room is not provided? <laughs> have you had moments, have you, have you ever had a moment where you've had to get ready in your car for a performance? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. I've, I've had to get ready in, in, in the bus you know just hanging around there you know and people are looking through the window wow. you know <laughs> that kind wow. of thing it's but you see it's 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 an industry that is very young in terms of the modern facilities that artists and performers need you know and the facilities are just not there and you know this is this is uh, an industry where it's a passion you know you do it anyway mm. you understand it's something you do even if you're not being paid you know, because that's what you love to do. So, you know, we we accept so many things that are which not kosher, which you you know really shouldn't be, be like that. But then also, you you would like to perform to your core fan base, and sometimes they're not in the, they're not all in the cities. But even if even if you know, I'm thinking it's the likes of yourself, um, Lumba, uh, it You guys have more than almost i'm like it's almost like an insult i don't know the reason that people of your status having to get ready in buses having to get ready in cars um with, with that forget the accident is this something that it should be happening <laughs> like i'm like how i can't imagine elsewhere and i know you shouldn't compare but really the, the the some of the you know tom jones or whoever oh please can you imagine don't have those five star um yeah you know, tour bus and so forth yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah. does it mean that we don't value our musicians enough our, our legends enough that they have to you know up by, on by the road yeah yeah well i don't think that we are valued enough i think as a society you know you look at other places even nigeria now mm. you know they're pumping money into music. At first, Nigeria was only known as a 419 country. Now, Nigeria is known as a music country. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they put resources. And films. And films yeah, as well. They yeah. They put resources behind the arts, especially music. You know, they hired the, the top people, you know, and once you are dealing with top people, other top people get into the arts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and the quality, you know, uh, excellent quality. You know, you're bound to break through. You understand? If if you if you're a creative person at all and have anything to go by, so uh, our 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 government and our uh, rich people will prefer to mm -hmm. get a pretty girl like you <laughs> buy you a house. Please don't lose me. Don't buy me no house. I think. Oh, then you're missing out. There's <laughs> a lot of money is going on. We have to tell you that. Oh. You know. So wow. it's unfortunate, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, 2016, of course, is an election year, is a big um, year for Ghana. Um, you know, most people would agree it's been a, a tough few years, but, you know, um, in terms of politics, I know some musicians choose to reveal who their political affiliation is, even campaign and tour mm -hmm. and so forth. It's something I've never seen you do. Um, why is that? Well, in the first place, um, I think that it's wrong to try and influence people because they love your music to try and put them on a certain direction. Or your movies or whatever. Uh, you know, but having said that, I, I'm, I'm also, you know, uh, irrevocably opposed to the political system we have in this country. I think it doesn't work. I think it's very, it's, it doesn't serve the people, it serves themselves, you understand? You know, as much as they might be deluded in thinking that they are doing something for the country, first of all, they, 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 they service themselves, the party, and, and their people, and, then, and the other people come a poor fed, 
if at all. Mm -hmm. You understand? And I think it's also because it is it is devoid of any form of culture, traditional culture. Yeah, you know, and that explains because the politicians are not responsible to anybody. They buy, they spend a lot of money to get to where they are, and they are responsible to their party, not to the people. Mm -hmm. You understand? If culturally they would be responsible to, the, to their people. So I think that there's something drastically wrong that needs to be addressed. You know, we cannot pretend to be Americans or British. You know, we have a system here that works in tandem with, or let me say side by side with, so-called modern gov governance system. Mm -hmm. But it's totally ignored, as if it was a challenge. You know what I'm here. Mm -hmm. So I'm opposed to that. I think that we should change the system, otherwise we'll get into a crisis. And, and, and in terms of what, if, 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 if you were president, um, how would you like to see Ghana? You know, I know you've, you said the way we, we, our government doesn't really work, but how, how would you like to see well, it? Well, I, I think that ideally, uh, government should carry the people along with it, whatever programs that they have. And how do you carry the people along with, with you? You carry the people along with you by starting with them, being with them, understanding who and where they are right now, and evolving with them. That way you can carry them. But you can't come and impose systems on them. Because right now, uh, traditionally, government is hated. It doesn't matter which party. Oh, that's government, true. they say... You're always going to be criticized yeah, once you're in power. No, 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 not even that. Aban, which is a carryover from the colonial system. Which you nazi, one for So you, you exploit it at every opportunity you get. And that's what a lot of the politicians are doing. They're exploiting it. You know, and... Uh, the populace who support parties is because they get something from it. You understand? And when you go, when it's voting time and they go and bribe the people, they know that's all they're going to get for four years. Wow. So they take it. It's not that they believe that this is the right system. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot that needs to change. But not a lot, but very little, but it can make a you know, mm -hmm. drastic difference. Okay, now obviously whenever there's an election year, um, you know, the, the, the word peace, you hear it along because everybody wants to have a smooth and fair and peaceful elections. And I know a lot of times some of the artists come together, do messages and so forth. Um, you know, is this something that when, when I know is going to happen? <laughs> is that something, can you, can you see yourself maybe doing a song to keep, you know, kind of peaceful, being joined in a, a contingent of people that will be doing that? Well, if it's a general, a neutral, you know, song that preaches peace yeah i mean i might support that okay non-partisan but um i think that you know what we are heading to is you know a big crunch why because these are big gamblers gamblers who are, yeah who are not gamblers? prepared to lose oh you mean the both the, the, yeah, parties. Those parties, they're gamblers you know they, they, they put a lot of money behind what they're doing and if they don't win they're in trouble financially and otherwise, you know, and then, you know, they hope to reap. Mm -hmm. And if, if they don't win, they can't reap. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's getting worse. And with all over Africa, this phenomenon has been happening. Ivory Coast, Kenya, you know, all over, you understand? So it doesn't bode well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, you know, so what we need to do is to change the system, make a constitution that reflects who we are. Not go and borrow the U.S. Constitution and try to dress it up as a Ghanaian. Mm. You know that's totally wrong it for me. Work. Yeah. Would, would, is politics something you think you would ever get into, given the chance, and do your <laughs> ideal kind of politics? Not obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, I, I have to say that man is a political animal. Mm. You cannot, like they say, the chiefs cannot indulge in politics. How is it possible? These are the leaders, the traditional, natural leaders of the people. For you to say in your constitution that they cannot indulge in politics is to hide your head in the sand. It's totally wrong. Because they are politicians. They deal with they deal, the, I mean, the body yeah. politic. Yeah. Okay. There's most, most times we've been yeah. in, in small towns and yeah. villages, they're the ones, they, they're, they're the like ones, judges. Yeah, they, <laughs> they're, they, judges. They, they're the courts, they're the police, they're everything. You know, and uh, they supplement the government a lot. Without them, Ghana wouldn't work. You understand? So when we talk about politics, we're talking about real politics, not partisan politics like political parties, you know, and you have to be with them or against them, that kind of thing, yeah. But on, on those terms, yes, I'm interested. 
Because so, wh 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 when can we office. see you? I mean, do you think you can be <laughs> get into being a solo um, candidate and you know maybe stand? No, I think that uh, you know a day will come when the groundswell mm. of uh, popular belief will be that we reject the system. We want something that reflects us, and you know so. Uh, maybe a, pol a new political party will come that will you know, follow the right principles and change the constitution to reflect who we are mm -hmm. and then we can move along. All right. Let's go. And on those mm -hmm. terms, I'm interested. And they are interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, let's kind of, you know, just looking at uh, our past presidents that we, we've had, um, I know you talk a lot about culture. Um, would you say you highlight one president and say, okay, well, this, this is the president that he's my favorite president, you know, gone or still here? Undisputably, Kwame Nkrumah, mm. you know, you know, was, you know, took a lot of pride in our culture, you know, encouraged creativity, you know, even travel with artists, musicians, poets, and things, you know, to reflect Ghana as it really is, you understand? You know, now uh, the presidency has become something of a position of opulence and power and, you know, it's not really reflective of the, the, the aspirations and desires of the people, okay? And, you know, culture is not treated with any respect. You know, when they're talking about the ministers of influence, they don't mention culture. You know, they don't mention even agriculture, but agriculture and rural development should be the basis, basis. of a country like Ghana. You know, so I mean, there's a lot going wrong. I mean, our lingua franca is English, and <laughs> 50 okay, percent okay. of people don't speak English. Uh, okay, so, well, this is the thing. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the official language of Ghana is English. Um, I know uh, sometimes last year that there were, there's been talks from the uh, Minister of Education of making. Um, some of the, the lessons in schools, taking it to local languages, and some people kicked against it because they say, well, people don't even speak in English, and then which, 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 which local languages would they teach people in? What do you think about that? I, I think that's what should have been, and that's what should be. But you know, in every country, there are so many different dialects. In China, there are thousands. Yes. But they choose the big one. Mandarin. Mandarin as the official language. It doesn't mean that the other languages, minor languages, should die, wither and die. Each locality should teach their own language plus a national language, mm -hmm. plus English and French if they want. You understand? Uh -huh. So we can look in Ghana. Let's face it: ninety-five percent of the business is done in Ikri. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you like it or not, whether you recognize it or not, that is the de facto case. So why are we pretending? You know. Why are we pretending for? But obviously, in light of political correctness, you know, whenever it comes down to, let's just say, when people say, okay, maybe apart from let's choose one local dialect to use, there'll be people that'll say, well, no, why should it be Chi? Why can't it be, I don't know, um, uh, Ga? Or why can't it be, uh, there's always going to be somebody. Well, I think that, that it's a natural thing that if 92 to 95 percent of the business done in Ghana is in Chi, why would you choose another language? You, you, you take the... Okay, that's according to your statistics. <laughs> oh, it's true. Uh, okay. That's true. Uh, the, 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 I, I know most people speak tree, yeah, but there's but always going to be somebody that will be like, well, no, um, you know, wh where's, the, where, where's, where's your data for that, um, you know, <laughs> for that <laughs> statistics, that 92%. Well, just, just look around you and you'll mm. see, you know, it's, mm. you know, everybody manages some amount of tree. Mm. Everybody. So you think... You think um, English. Okay, you made a good point. Um, English is not spoken by everybody, you're right? It's so not. You know, we have a, a national anthem and pledge in English. And half the people don't speak English. So what the hell are they talking about? Ask anybody in the street to, to recite the pledge. And 90% of them, would, what they would say, would just, you know, just amuse, just entertain you. And you yes, say, there's some Jesus videos Christ. online. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, it's terrible. You know, so where's the passion? The passion is in the tradition. Why are we missing on that? Because we want to pretend to be modern. What is modernity? Modernity, as its practice, is just defined as European culture. That's all. Using of implement is not modernity. They're always implements. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, some of our rural folk use the, the cell phone better than some of our ministers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some can't even text. 
But these people, some of them, it's so it's not about the ability to speak English. It is about intellect. And there's a lot of intellect out there that's being sidelined. Why? Because they can't speak English. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's okay. so stupid, so silly. What do you make of um, our current president right now, President John Jamani Mahama? What do you think about, you know, if you were, the work he's doing? I know he gets a lot of critique and, you know, people love him as well. But from, from where you sit, how do it you It is very doing? difficult to assess his work, except that you look out. You know, it's very difficult to assess any politician's work. Why? Because of the partisan nature of politics. Because there's always opposi o opposition that is trying to make everything look black. Okay? And then, therefore, the party in power is always trying to make everything look white. So the people are mesmerized. They don't see. It's a, it's a, mm -hmm. a room of mirrors. Okay? But if you look at the structures being laid, if you look at then maybe you can discern a certain difference. Now they talk about, uh, there's all this talk about uh, corruption and this and that and that. And that. Or uh, ending corruption. Or yeah, yeah, ending corruption. But you know, how can we end corruption? Who are the people who corrupt? It takes a corrupter and corruptee. It's not okay, and the people shouting that Africans are corrupt, they're the very ones corrupting Africans. You understand? And, you know, because our people do not embrace our culture, they are easily corruptible. Mm -hmm. Okay? If they were responsible to the people, they will be less corruptible. So, um, <laughs> um, you didn't answer the question. I like how you just... <laughs> you, just but it, 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 you said it's difficult to assess him, but do you think it's, um, he's doing a good job just from where you said? I think under the circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, he's doing fine. You know, mm -hmm. he's doing fine. I mean, uh, don't forget that... Uh, Actually, no other party or group is going to make a lot of difference because a lot of the controls are not even from here. You understand? The world economic climate, you know, the disparity between the, the, the powers that be and the smaller countries, they don't have a say. Mm. You understand? And even if you're not careful, they can even ruin things for you because you're not towing the line. All this IMF, all these things are not good for us in a lot of ways. And every, it's been said over and over, even some of the people who have worked with these bodies have said so, that it is designed to put us in hock for a long time, you know? And yet, we go for these things as if it's, it's a victory, you know? <laughs> it's money, crazy. it's money. Yeah, and then people can get their uh, cuts direct, so it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have some information you want to share? <laughs> Do share with us. <laughs> How, no, of course. Okay, of course all right. Not. I mean, but you know, it just stands to reason. Everybody talks about it. We know, we know a little bit. We don't know all, but we know a little bit. All right. So Dumso um, was declared as being officially over. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, some people have disputed it. Um, you know, from where you say, how, how was the Dumso era for you? I feel like I'm going to be telling my grandchildren about Dumso. Like I'll be like. Oh, then Dumso happened. I feel like it's become like, it's almost like part of Ghana. Like, you don't mention Ghana without Dumso. We joke about it, whatever, but it's pretty yeah. serious. But um, Dumso has been declared over. But I what, think what Dumso, that Dumso is actually a national historical shame. You understand? For the country to come to its knees about its energy needs, you know, it's, it's a shame. And you know, when it comes to especially power and electricity, it takes a lap time of about four years to correct. It's not easy. But we've sat down, we had them so from Rollins's time, you know? And then, you know, it balances out a little bit, and then we had it on the Kufo even, mm -hmm. okay? And nothing serious was done. Now it comes to this, and everybody thinks that the government should just uh, snap their finger and it will be over. Realistically, it's not possible. Nobody could have just solved them so just Overnight. like that. It takes you know, long-term planning, at least medium-term planning, to make it work. And maybe they've, they've not handled it the best way they could have, you know, because for industries to suffer, it's not a good thing. You know, for business to suffer, it's not a good thing, because you're talking about employment, you're talking mm -hmm. about income, you know, and all these things. So, uh, but the basic elements, I don't think that anybody could have done much better. Maybe they could have done a little better, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know. But at least um, in terms of it for you, well, how did it affect you? I mean, your music, your business, was it? Well, <laughs> it affected if everybody and everything. But, you know, let, let me point out here that, you know, people in the rural areas, 
you know, they say when see rough fish don't give. That's they, you know, true. <laughs> see what That's I mean? True. What is rough sea to fish? You know, yeah. Yeah. so they they don't use electricity. You know, for much so they don't really care. You know what I mean? If you, if when you lament the city people lament so much about electricity and lack of air conditioning, they just wonder who are what these are people? About? <laughs> who what are, are these people? About? Where did they come from? You know, and then if you go into the rural areas, you see that governments have been trying to spread, you know, uh, electricity, and there's all this infrastructure, you know, uh, great, you know, layout power lines and all this all over, and then you go to a small village, and maybe two or three houses actually use the electricity. Not sure. So you know that might look like a major waste. You understand? And you know, in the immediacy, it is not economic, but I think it's part of the structural yes. development of the country. So there's, there's all kinds of things that have, be take, have to be taken into consideration when you're making an assessment, you know. So are we still talking about Ben Braco? <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to hear your views and find out what's happening. I wanted to actually move into your, your private life. I know you're married um, and you have five children. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just mentioned before we went on air that you're about to... Have my fifth grandchild. Fifth grandchild. Yeah, hopefully this month, yeah. Oh, so oh, okay. So hopefully mm, this month. Imminent, yeah. Um, family life. How important is it for you? At least just to, as as a musician, because one of the things I noticed for years, for years, most musicians, male musicians, get a bad rap. They'll think, oh, he's really a musician. He'll be a womanizer and so forth. <laughs> but you know, you're a family man. Um, you know, keep it pretty quiet. But what's family life? How important is that? For I you? think family life is very, very important for any grown up, especially with children. You know. And family life is not just about, um, you know, being together all the time, being in each other's clothes and all that. It's about uh, much more than that. It's about, you know, the children. It's about the education. It's about the upbringing. It's about your investments, your, you know, your properties and stuff. You understand? There's much more to it. It's not just about sex, mm. you know. And people get it wrong when they say that, oh, He's having sex with somebody that's not his wife. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wrong. You know, I better tell his wife to abandon him. You know, that's, that's, that's modern rubbish. Mm. You know, I mean, which of us can say that our parents, you know, especially at my age, that they were not polygamous in nature, mm. at least, you know. Even the Europeans are polygamous in nature, but they hide it. Because the system doesn't, you know, let you breathe. So I'll fi you find after 18 years that this guy's been doing it <laughs> and pretending that it's only him and his wife. Mm -hmm. So, you know, man is by nature like that. But it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the family life is not important. It mm -hmm. is very, very important. This is very important. Okay, so yeah. um, in terms of your your your, uh, your wife is in Ghana with you. No, my wife is in England. She's in England. Yeah, all my children. There's children in England. Yeah. So, because I, I know I know you you, you go back yeah. and forth yeah. a lot. Do you, why didn't you ever choose to live and stay completely in England? Because I know a lot of musicians who at some point they were like, no, the music thing is too dead here, or I've had enough. And especially when your family is there, why why did why didn't you make that decision to stay? In well, England? the thing is with me, I'm not just a, a session musician that I go around, you know, uh, touring all the time and, you know, you see what I mean? I, I have a full life outside of music, even though music is my passion. And I find that you go stale if you don't refresh from your roots, uh, you know, and, and even you lose your happiness, you lose your groove, you know. So coming back to Ghana has been a great thing for me, you know. I feel myself once again. Mm -hmm. I feel my creative juices flowing, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. <laughs> like I know you've been recording, and, yeah. and you know, wh wh how soon can we expect a next Ben Bracco album? I think that um, we're in 2016. Oh, yeah. uh, it is almost 30 years. Well, like we're on the eve of the 30th year of the release of Fire. Fire! Wow! Okay. Wow! And yeah, because it came I, out in 1987. <laughs> yeah. Right? 87. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. wow. So, you know, it's time for me to come out and say something else. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm getting ready for that. Would you, would you release something this year or you'd wait to release in 2017? Then it'll be exactly 30 years. Well, I think I'll release something this year. Because when you release something, 
usually it needs time it to takes grow, time grow, you know spread. so by 2017 you know it will have uh, blossomed uh, hopefully mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Wow, 30 years. <laughs> I'm like, wow, time is yeah. just flying. Um, all right, so what, just some, just move away a little bit. Like, what, your favorite food? What, what, what is your favorite food? Like, at least every week, or you have to make sure you, you get some. Oh. At least what, what gets. I love watching, though. Okay. Yeah, I love watching. I think, I think when they do it good, but I love everything if it's done well. Mm. You understand? A lot of times I have difficulty choosing what I want to eat. I said, make it good. I'll eat it. But do you cook? Yeah, I cook. Yeah, I cook a little bit. But I don't. I don't do a lot of cooking. But uh -huh. one needs to be. I cook, and, and the people enjoy. My children, for instance, enjoy my cooking, especially my breakfast. Ooh. What kind of breakfast do you make? <laughs> <laughs> Is it English breakfast, or do you um, do some cocoa and stuff? I mean, when I was living in England, obviously, I had yeah. to do a lot of English food. But you know, I always mix in something traditional, so they get to learn about you know some of the things that you know come from their roots yeah mm -hmm. huh. all right now obviously i said undoubtedly when we when we, when we talk of high life um you know if there's a walk of fame your name would certainly be up there um you had a, a, a career spanning well i mean your album was almost 30 years but you had a career that kind of predates it predates, like, predates that and you know how I'm, many more years was it over 40 years in the music industry oh yeah i mean i would say i was a teenage pop star you know mm -hmm. we, we actually formed uh, school groups and we came out uh, to play in the public during the summer holidays mm -hmm. you know and that's how we gainfully employed ourselves mm -hmm. you understand so we're playing with the, the professional bands from the age of 15 wow you know we're touring the country Kumasi Takwade Accra Lome Abidjan you know we, we did all kinds of things so uh, that was more or less fully embracing music you mm -hmm. know uh, but uh, some of them different people went their different ways but I Though I continue my education, my passion was still music. Music. And what, still is. What would you like in and years we'll to come? It will forever. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> in, in years to come, um, you know, when people talk about the Ben Bracco legacy, what would you like people to say about what you, what, what you, not only your music, but what, what you stand for as a person? I think that if people can only say that this guy was true to his, himself and his root and his origins, I'll be more than happy. You know, if people can say that uh, I'm, I w I'm a genuine guy, you know, with, with the right passions, you know, who wants to help and, you know, uh, elevate everything around him. That's what I stand for. Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we, I let you go, um, I said, I want to, I want, I want to do the Brent Bracco dance. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Oh, it's oh, right there. No, no, hey. No, no, I, 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 we need to rewind that because I've seen you do it and it's just some, like it's the arms trust me I've tried it just doesn't and we, I won't say it will stand but if you want to do the Brem Bracco like what is it <clears throat> ah hey okay it's the arms <laughs> <laughs> it's the arms you, you should arms you should pattern that uh, and the hips. And I have because because we're sitting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's the bounce. You have some bounce. Yeah. Where did you like? Was it a thought of thing or is just something that just kind of happened naturally? It's just me. It's just me in, in a good mood expressing myself. You know, when you're performing, you know, you've got to be deep in yourself and you've got to express yourself. You've got to express the joy and happiness that <laughs> is part of the performance. So, you know. I just get into myself. I think it's a bit of a spiritual thing as well. Mm -hmm. Music, you know, because you transform, you know, when you are. You on get stage. on stage, yeah, yeah. You know, and you know that because you're a performer too. When you so, even like theater, when you're, yeah. you're, no matter how nervous you are, as soon as you get on stage, mm -hmm. something hits. You get into character, and you know, that's it, you know. Okay. Yeah. Like, I know music is a big thing for a lot of young people in, in, in today. I know High Life, there was a point people were saying, oh, High Life is dying out, but I think certainly uh, there's some young people who are doing amazing. Are there any um, people that they particularly stand out to you, the, the newer generation? Oh, I generation? think with, without doubt, Bisakede is doing, you know, magic, you know, because not only is he doing uh, High Life, but he's even gone as far as to do some traditional songs like Mansa, mm. you know, which is, you know, a fantastic thing. And it's made it so popular, you know. And when people research and look back, they will see that this is a traditional song. And now he's even done some guitar, mm -hmm. high life thing, which is uh, this guy, you know, 
there's no stopping him. He has to be pushed, he has to be encouraged, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, and advice to, um, and, you know, And I love those earrings. Thank you. They don't oh, make you a uh, <laughs> oh, they, sh they should. <laughs> <laughs> they should. My Sankofa. Um, so in terms of the, for the young people, um, last, just last advice before I let you go. Uh, advice you'd give to young people who um, want a, a, a career in music. I think some people think it's easy because they see people on the telly doing it and stuff, but just the realities of it, what advice you give? I think that, first of all, you should do it for the right reasons because mm -hmm. you have that passion to express something. And then you should express the right things. You know, it should reflect who you are, where you come from, and should be beneficial to your community, you know, and hopefully if you do it well, the whole world will embrace it. But, you know, you got to have a passion, and not just because uh, you think you can, you can get along with also. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do that just to be popular, you know, but that is, that is the wrong approach. Sometimes right. they're successful, sometimes they're not. All right. Ah, unfortunately, time is up. I wish we can go on and on and on. I want to say a big thank you to, um, you know, Ben Bracco, a man of culture. Do you know what? Just listening to you, one word I kept hearing over was culture, culture, culture. He certainly is a man of culture, a legend in his own right. Uh, we're going to take a Ben Bracco song right now. I'm going to be, <laughs> can we perform? This was a Ghana movie awards as he's going to, as we're showing that I'm going to be doing my Ben Bracco. And make sure you join us very soon. Of course, um, this is New Day.